All right, let's talk about Kenrith. So I played a uh, play today, and uh, played two games, and then I was just so frustrated. I knew I was going to get pissy, and I was not going to be fun to play with. So I I went ahead and packed up and left. <coughs> First game I played Edric, and he just didn't get going. I had Survival of the Fittest out. I had Nature's Lore out. I had a Learn out, but I wasn't drawing any creatures. I couldn't attack the genie because it cost me three per creature to attack him because of his effects. Um, couldn't really attack Cube uh, except with two creatures because I had uh, Tetsuko Omizawa, the fugitive. My creature's power, toughness one, cannot be blocked. And I had only two of those. And then it was also five turns before I got any green to cast Edric. And that's only because the genie cast a Tempt with a Discovery kind of spell. I think it's Tempt with Bunnies. I'm not exactly sure what he cast, but... Uh, so, Edric, I just chalked it up to Bad Shuffle, because he's proved himself. Edric works. Edric is one of my best decks. Kenrith is... He started out really strong, started out as one of my best decks, but now something has changed. Uh, something in the way the group plays, they've gotten better. There's more spot removal. They try to keep Kenrith off the field, understandably. And he's just not getting there. But I don't want to take the deck apart because it still has potential. It's still, I think it will still work. So what I'm going to do with you is take out the things. First, let me just pull out all the land. And then I'm going to look at what works and what doesn't work. And think about, okay, what does Kenrith want to do? He's mana intensive. He's very mana intensive. So I need to get lands into play as quickly as possible. I need effects that pump them up. And I need to start using his abilities more. Um, in most games, I hardly ever, well, in today's game especially, I didn't really put any plus and plus encounters on creatures. Um, very rarely gave my creatures trample and haste because there just wasn't uh, profitable attack. Uh, and like I said, it was just very frustrating. So let me just hurry up and take out the lands. And the way I built the deck, to remind you, is five mana rocks, five cards, one of each allied color pair, uh, enemy color pair, as I've said many times. I did not have that many interesting cards, so I just didn't bother. One CMC black, one two CMC black, one three CMC black, all the way up the scale to six for all five colors. So 30 cards. I'm going to go away from that. I'm not going to stick to that. I'm going to stick with colors. Um, stick with the basic land idea because that's still, that's still sound. I, I still like that. So the only non-basics he has are Thawing Glaciers, Cascading Cataracts, and Fable Passage. So if I play back to basics, the only one that, two that really get hit are Thawing Glaciers and Cataracts. So let's start with what is definitely a keeper, which are the five mana rocks. One. One. Two, yeah, I'm calling that a mana rock, a millimeter sphere. A millimeter sphere is two to cast, two to activate, sacrifice it, search for two basic land cards, show them off, put them in your hand, then shuffle. So I'm calling that one of the mana rocks. Um, I can't remember, I don't think I called Solemn Simulac a mana rock. He kind of is. There's Thor Stone, there's Soul Ring, and where is the land? Yep. So. Five mana rocks. Chromatic Lantern, Soul Ring, Felwar Stone from the Dirt, our Middle Sphere, and Arcane Signet. So all those work, and they all have, they all even out to the same CNC because those average out to two. These are all two. Well, I have to activate the our Miller Sphere. Let's see what else works. Let's take out the other artifacts and look at those first. 
<laughs> yeah, Vorpal Sword is an artifact, but it's the one CMC black, so I'm not considering it as an artifact. Maybe I should. Dun, 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 dun. Yep. Okay. So which of these should I keep? The other thing I was thinking about is... So let's start with what Ken throws. Let's take a moment and look at what he does. So, 5 for a 5-5, five five, Human Noble. That's pretty good. He's square. And those are pretty good stats. He would have been a god, you know, 30, 40 euro card um, 15 years ago. Maybe 10 years ago. But now he's just like, eh, he looks cool. So, all creatures gain trample and haste. So I want to put in creatures. I want to put them into play and give them trample and haste. Okay, so if I have a bunch of big creatures, I need to be able to have the one red to pay. Plus one plus encounter on target creature. What else can I do with that? So I've been thinking very linearly, putting it on my creatures. Well, or politically, I can give it to somebody else. What if I put a Hirobi in this deck? What if I put a Hirobi Death Whale in this deck, and I can put a counter on a creature and kill it? What if I did that? And Hirobi is not expensive. The Multiverse Legends version of Hirobi, I think, is 50 crowns. 2 euro. So I can do that. I can get a Hirobi. Count him as a black card. Target player gains 5 life. I've been using that to kind of keep myself from getting killed. And uh, I've got Sanguine Bond in the deck. So whenever I gain life, somebody loses life. So there's a combo there. Target player draws a card. <clears throat> if I if I put in say uh, Jarl, one Wooly Recluse. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, you get a two-two Kitty Cat. I can put her in here pretty easy. I've got an extra one. I bought one for uh, Corvald. Didn't use her in Corvald, so I've got it available. I could put her in here, and whenever I draw my second card. I'll get a kitty cat so I can start going wider. Problem with this deck is it is full of high cast and nice creatures, and I was thought I could lean on quick serve amulet and sneak attack to get them into play, and I keep not getting the quick serve amulet. I think I've drawn the sneak attack once, so there's a problem there. And then the target creature from graveyard under its owner's control. Okay, if I have Hirobi, then my creatures with come into play effects, I can target, put a counter on it, it dies, and then I can bring it back. It's seven mana, it's pretty intensive. So I need more ramp in Hirobi and Kenrith. I need more ramp in him. And the other thing I was thinking of is I could put in Global Ruin. I've got a copy of Global Ruin because I think the art is kind of cool. Global Ruin costs the same as Kenrith, four colors, one white. It's a sorcery. Everybody chooses a land of each basic land type and sacrifices the rest. It's either sacrifice or destroy. I can't remember what. It kind of doesn't matter. So if I cast Global Ruin and I've got one basic land of each type and everybody else has maybe some flavor of dual lands, it uh, should reset the game. The thing is, land destruction, we haven't really started touching on that. We don't really do that in my group. I'm not sure if I want to go that way. I'll go with mana denial, because Kenrith does have a back to basics. Let me try to put him where, yeah, there's more light. Okay, sort of hearth and home. If I put in Hirobi, this would become more tricky, but a crit creature gets split 2 2, texture and green and white. When he hits somebody, flicker a creature your own and go find a base land, then put them both under your control. Now, if somebody has taken control of my creatures, I could flicker that creature and get it back. So, a sort of, sort of hearth and home is a way of getting back creatures that somebody has stolen. Not very often. This happens, but it is possible. Uh, Spellbomb. 
Sometimes I need to exile somebody's graveyard. It only costs one. If I spend another black, it draws me a card. So that's pretty good. A duplicant. He costs six, but he exiles a creature, a non-token creature. Kind of funny that he specified non-token. And if I sneak attack him, I kind of don't care. So we'll put him in the... Think about it. Burn a chart. Three. And then when I've got three of it, somebody attacks, I block. And since he's going to die anyway, I sack him to put two basic lands into play. Like I said, I need the ramp. So he needs to stay. Spell sky. Can protect Kenrith. I've never seen it in a game, but it's there. Quick serve amulet. If I start changing it so I'm not I don't have as many big creatures or as many creatures with tough casting costs then I won't need this so let's put that in the maybe this would be maybe this would be yes this would be yeah, it doesn't work someone's in the locker room yeah he, he just fucking works okay let's look at the multicolor cards that I've got there's only five of them so this will be pretty quick well Six. I forgot I put uh, Omnath in there. Yep, that's it. So, new addition is Roxanne, Starfall Savant. Uh, thought she would be good because she comes into play, creates that meteorite, it does two damage to something, and I can tap it for mana. If I tap it with her in play, I get two, but otherwise I get one, so it's still mana acceleration. Uh, she does cost five to get out, so I'm not sure. Omnath, Locus of all. Okay, this guy draws me an extra card every turn. At the beginning of my pre-combat main, I look at the top card in my library, no matter what, I put it in my hand. It says if you do show it off at three mana, put it in your hand. If you don't reveal it, put it in your hand. So either way, he draws me, gets me an extra card each turn. And he only costs four and two life. So let's keep him. Lavinia the Tenth. The problem with her, I mean, she's fantastic. She's an all-star. She's been an all-star in every deck I've ever put her in. I love this girl. I don't have many ways of blinking her. I need to put more blink effects. If I put in Hirobi, that becomes a pseudo blink because if Hirobi is in play, I can give her a counter, and then she'll die, and then I can reanimate her with Kenrith. But she does really good work in the deck, so keep her. Murray's Wake, yep, that's fantastic. Fire Covenant, this is funny, nobody expects it. Um, and Kenny gets me in a lot of life, potentially. So this is a good way of blasting uh, some creatures. And you can divide the damage any way you want. So you pay 10 life, you can do 1 there, 3 there, 3 there three there. However you want. Limdul's Vault. Um, I was using this as a tutor. So Kenrith lets me draw cards. So if I tutor, if I've got the mana, I can draw that card. Problem is, at that point, I would have spent blue and black, three colorless and one blue to draw it from Kenrith. So that's six. So I would still need mana to actually cast the spell. So it's not guaranteed, but it's a pretty good um, find what I need spell. Let's take a look at black. We'll go in color order alphabetically. I, like, I just like keeping it alphabetical. And I'm going to deviate from that one, two, three, four, five, six concept. I'm going to deviate from that. Bone Shredder. Fucking fantastic with Kenrith. Comes into play. I shred something. Destroy, you know, terrorize, non back artifact, non black creature. My next upkeep, he dies, and Kenrith can bring him back. Toxrel. Never had Toxrel out. I don't know how good he is. In effect, I mean, he looks really good. But I've not had him in play. He costs seven. That's kind of the limiting factor. Although, with Kenrith, maybe 
I need mill. Actually, Kenrith needs a survival of the fittest. Survival of the fittest or fauna shaman. I've got a fauna shaman in my art binder. Yes, that is what Kenrith needs. So let's put Toxrel in the maybe and we'll because I need space for the cards I'm going to add. Evgeny's expertise, all creatures get neg three, neg three till in turn, and then I can throw a card of CMC three or less from my hand without paying for it. That's that works. Sanguine Bond, <laughs> gain life, target player loses that much yeah, that works. Vizar the Dutch she's just too slow. I I love that I've got a foil one. I really want to play her. I like the art. Um She's big and threatening, but that triple black in her casting, she just doesn't do the deed. She doesn't get there. I need to, actually I should put her in Hirobi. I've got a Hirobi mono black. I should put her in Hirobi. So we'll put her in the, we'll just call it maybe an out. I'll figure it later. Vorpal sword. Uh, I killed the genie with it tonight because Ramon had cast a uh, spell that wiped out his creatures and I saw it as my only chance to actually kill him because he was playing his Ms. Um, Bloomborough, Bloom Bucket, his Rabbit Bloomborough Precon Gurpug deck and he just goes and nobody sees him as a threat because he's helping everybody. They see me as a threat because of historical reasons <laughs> because in the past I have been, but sometimes I play decks that aren't that much of a threat. And some of the lads don't have very good assessment of what's going on on the board. And they'll just attack me whenever they, because I'm always a threat. Doesn't matter what else is going on, I can come back. And to be fair, some games, yes, it's happened. But uh, not always. So I'm going to take this out. Because it just doesn't do enough. It's too intensive. Um, requires the creature to get through. Requires me to have 8 mana to activate it. And 2 0 death is just not worth a slot, really. So take that out. Bitter Blossom. Kenrith gains me life. This gives me creatures. They're not very impressive creatures. I don't have anything that I sacrifice creatures and do anything with. Um, it does give me blockers, but I don't think it really fits in the deck. So let's take out Bitter Blossom. Okay, so that's black. And like I said, these are maybe and out. So let's look at blue. What have I got for blue? I'm blue. Da ba dee da ba da. Da ba dee da ba doo doo. Double O. Where's the other blue cards? Blue, blue, blue. Okay. So, what have I got? I've got Unwind, Counter Target, Non Creature Spell, and tap up to three lands. Um, I should just put in some other kind of counter spell. The problem is, with the counter spells though, is I need to stay away from the double blues. Because early in the game, I've only got non basics. So it's unlikely I'll have the extra blue when I need it. So maybe a mana leak, I'll have to think about it. Glenelander Archmage, yep, she does her job. She's good. Sphinx of the Second Sun. Well, if I take out Quick Servo Amulet, and or sneak attack. I don't really have many ways of getting him into play except that idea of throwing creatures in the graveyard and reanimating them with Kenrith. I think that's what I need to do. I think Kenrith needs to be reanimator. So, and this guy, so the beginning of my post combat main, I get an additional beginning phase. So untap up, keep draw. So I get he untaps everything. If there's an upkeep, if I've got braid of fire, I put another counter on braid of fire, and uh, a draw card. So I think he's worth it. Keep him in there. Mystical tutor. 
There's really not a lot I'm tutoring for. I realize that I've cast it and I go through and I'm like, okay, what am I looking for? What am I doing? There's not a whole lot of instants, interrupts, or sorceries in this deck. In fact, there's no interrupts in the deck. This instance, so typically I get Eugenie's expertise. But I don't think I need to. I think I should rather just put in another uh, board wipe. So let's take out Mystical Tutor. Back to basic. Oh yeah, I wanted this bad tonight. Oh, I, I was, I, please let me draw back to basics. Please let me draw back. And I just kept not getting it. But Cube, he only had two basic lands out of eight or so. The genie was about the same. Roman, his uh, pre-con was, uh, I think he had about four basic lands, six non-basic, but yeah, I, I really wanted to play that. Okay, Master, take an instant sorcery out of your graveyard, put it back in your hand. Yep, keep her. Bribery, I had this in my hand, and I kept staring at it, and I kept thinking, okay, which one of these guys is it actually worth to cast this on? Which one of these guys will have a creature that will be interesting enough and will help me? Probably none of them. Negate. Count target nine creature spell. Only cost one blue. Yep. Dead Eye Navigator. If it had been for Dead Eye Navigator. So he blinks. He's done good work before in this deck. So let's keep him. All right, let's go into green. The phone, the phone, she goes green, 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 and I pink it up and I say yellow. All right, so green. Need more basic lands? Need more basic lands. Need protection. She's fucking awesome. This guy's my exploration and my mana fixing. Fog. Maybe I need it, maybe I don't. It just depends on what direction I go, so let's put it in maybe. Seek the horizons, yep. The thing is, I need something that puts the lands into play. I need to look up and find something that puts the lands into play. Because I cast this, because I needed black. I wasn't getting any swamps. And I went ahead and pulled out three lands. And I still couldn't cast, so I had to throw away a land. I had to discard at the end of my turn. I need something else. Eternal Witness, yeah. Burgeoning, great with on glaciers. This guy, this guy, he's got so much potential. I just, he hasn't been in play very often. Whenever another permanent comes into play under your control, if it wasn't put there on with his ability, I could put something else with equal or lesser CMC on the battlefield. So if I have a land and I play anything, I just put the land down. <clears throat> because it's permanent with equal or lesser. So keep him. Alright, let's go into red. Okay, blow up all the artifacts that yeah. This guy. If I go the randomator, then this guy is even better. This guy's great at clearing out tokens. Massacre Worm could, might be better, but I don't have an extra copy right now. Itali, Primal Storm. Why not? Keep it. God, this guy's just funny. Oh, I love the art. Oh, it's just hilarious. Look, his tail is on fire. Can you see his tail is on fire? Look at his big teeth. Look at his grin. Oh, that's fucking hilarious. Anyway, this guy, destroy target and artifact, and then the artifact hurts him. But Kenneth gets him back. Uh, I just put this in there because I needed something CMC 5 for red, but if I deviate from that, I don't need it anymore. I love the art. It was fun playing this around Ice Age, but it just... Yeah, with Kenrith... I can give it haste, so that's five plus then six mana, and it only deals three unless I've got mana to put counters or 
if I've got Murray's Wake, it deals four. And that creature deals it back. So let's take that out. Afraid of fire. Free mana. Only during my upkeep, but it can feed the colorless. So during my upkeep, if that's on three, I could spend one blue and draw a card. If during my upkeep it's only on two and I've got a white, I can gain five life. You don't belong on the deck, you belong above the deck. <sighs> three red. Three red to deal four damage to any target. I know I want to get away from multi more than two color pips, but this guy is so good. And today I cast him, I hard cast him, and I gave him haste. The game had gone on, gone on that long. And I killed uh, Ramon. But then, because it took me so long to get going, and Kenrith was just choking along, chugging along, not really working, um, I couldn't beat Cube. He get he they kept drawing removal, and I just got frustrated and said, okay, I don't want to play anymore. And I gave up. I conceded. I quit like a little bitch. <sighs> Let's keep that in there and sneak attack. I mean, this is great because with Kenny, <laughs> when it dies, I can just bring it back. Let's look at white. Okay, phone to search the library. They're not really searching the libraries that much, um, the lads I play with. I mean, they'll fetch, they'll break a, um, oh, what is it, Evolving Wilds. But as far as searching, they, they don't do it that much. So he doesn't really do, he's not very effective. She's great. Sun Titan. Oh, I love Sun Titan. Dawn of Hope. <clears throat> the idea with this is if I have Dawn of Hope out and Kenny, I pay five. I gain five life and then I draw a card. And then I can create soldiers. I'm not sure if I want to keep it or not. I'm not sure if it's worth the slot or not. Because again, it's mana intensive. So let's put it in the maybe. Avison, uh, okay. Great with sneak attack. Great if I can bring her back into the graveyard. Let's keep her. Glorious protector. I'm go I'm going to take her out and put in either um, what is he? Guardian of the faith. I'll put in Guardian of, Guardian of Faith, not of the Faith, Guardian of Faith or Ghost Way. I'll put in one of those instead of her. Although I can bring her back out with Kenny. But then there's three angels in the deck that she can't deal with. She can't help. So probably Guardian of Faith would be better in here. There's one of the angels, Bansar Angel. Yeah, keep her. Archangel of Thune. Nigger Man Life. <laughs> hey Kenny. Give me five life. Okay man, here's five life. And she said, You gain life. Put a counter on all your creatures. Let's keep her. The Wanderer. Prevent all non combat damage that we dealt to you and um kind of a corner case, but then the exile target creature, that could be good. So let's see what I've got. Let's run the numbers. Let's and restart for my battery dies. One, two, three, four, five, six white. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven red. So I'll say I need one more white. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight green. So let's say I need another white, another green, another red. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I need two more blue cards. 
One, two, three. <laughs> I need five more black cards. But if one of them is Roby, this could get really interesting. So if I did it this way, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So instead of keeping the CMC idea, I'll just keep the even number of color idea. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So, so that's what I'm thinking now. So that leaves me a lot of room to play with. What if I put in Tox Roll back? Put the duplicate back. Take these out. Put these in. So there is another one of the black cards. A worldly tutor. So if I go ten of each color, that's fifty, leaving me twelve cards to play with. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Hmm. Hmm, I'm going to have to think about this. That's 15. So, 62 minus 15 is 47. So one color or three colors would have to get shafted for a card. Which I'm I'm fine with that if you know let's say I do green ramp because that is becoming uh, apparent to be key. So what do I put in? What do I do? I'm already pretty much sold in Hirobi. I'll put in a Hirobi. Uh, I need more protection, so. Ghost Way, Guardian of Faith, and I I ordered a bunch of cards from Nelia, and I ordered a uh, Ravnica Remastered Ghost Way because it was cheap. So he can get that. At least one more counter spell, something interesting, or a creature that counters something. Hmm. Hmm. And then <clears throat> Fauna Shaman. And uh, other ways to get things in the graveyard without just milling myself blindly. Or maybe I should mill myself blindly. I need to think about it. I need to think about it. And figure out the way this deck is going to go. If you have any ideas, of course, as always. That's the comments are for. Comments are so you can tell me your ideas, give me your thoughts, tell me about the new cards I don't know about, because there has to be some new cards I just don't know about. There always are. So let's put Toxril in here. Let's take out something I know that's coming out. Let's take out Vorpal Sword, because Vampiric Tutor is just better than the sword anyway. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> the other thing I was thinking about is I've got a sword of body and mind I'm not doing anything with. Sword of body and mind would allow me to uh, give it give Kenny protection from blue and green. Sorry, I just lost my turn of thought because I was thinking of Juro thinking of how to count these. 
I think I'm going to count the, these are green cards. They are. I'm going to count them as part of the mana suite. I'm going to rethink the deck as cards and then mana rocks and mana and ramp suite. So I want two more things, two more cards. We'll put him there. We'll put him there. I want ten cards for the mana suite. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Need another one. Seek the Horizons is okay, but it's just not getting there. It's not... I need them in play. I need something to put the lands into play and doesn't care what kind of lands. Or I could just go with Guy's Bounty. Guy's Bounty costs one less and I find two lands. Maybe that's what I need. Um, or, even though it's only gets one land, there's that sorcery from Strixhaven. I've got a pick here that I just can't remember it. Basically you spend two, go find a basic land, put it in your hand, and gain two life. And it's colorless, two colorless. Maybe that, maybe that's what I should do. So anyway, I'll take these out. And I'll figure out what to do with this deck. Figure out how to salvage it, because it's fun. It's a fun to play. I like playing it. I just don't like losing. And I don't like sitting there doing nothing. When I can't get going, because I didn't put enough fucking ramp cards in the deck, and I've got too many big things, I've got too many tricks waiting for something, to, too many reaction cards. Remember, you can never have too many threats. You can have too many answers, because if they don't play something that you have to answer, it's a dead card.